Hey, what's going on? It's Barrett with Espresso Outlet and Kaleido Roasters USA. And today we're going to take a look at some of these really popular home roasters that are on the market right now. And for the most part, I'd say they're all fairly comparable in size. Um, they all have very similar functionalities, but yet they're also completely different roasters. So I got together with two of my friends and they actually have these other brands of roasters. So we wanted to take a quick look, do a little roast off, have some fun, and just kind of pro con maybe like what we do and don't like about our roasters. What, what seemed like an afterthought? What is just really amazing about this roaster? And just sharing the personal insights that we have. So we're really just trying to make it so that if you're making a a decision on buying a home roaster or even a small commercial roaster we hope that this helps you make that informed decision so to start with we actually have the Comorant. it's a 600 gram gas roaster and it's a really neat little roaster it's definitely different than the other two which are electric roasters the second one is the alia bullet and up until now that kind of seems like the gold standard of one kilogram machines there's really nothing else out there that's really that size that can really operate like this one can so there's i'd say the next size up is probably three kilogram on like a mill city or something like that so it's definitely a nice size but for a lot of home roasters they see the price tag and the price tag is really expensive and a lot of home roasters they don't necessarily want that full kilogram so having an option to go a little bit smaller would be nice probably in the alio size but take a look at the Alia, very popular roaster. And then last, I brought an M2 and an M6 Collider roaster. We're just gonna roast on the M6 because I felt like it was the most comparable in size to um, the Comorant and the Bullet. The Bullet is about twice as large as the other two, but he runs it about eight or 900 grams typically. So we're just gonna take a quick look. Uh, initially, what we're gonna do is we're just going to have everyone talk about their machine and maybe highlight the features on it, some things that they like about it. Uh, I know a couple of the things they kind of wished were a little bit better, but really not earth shattering. And then after that, we're going to actually do a roast on each of the roasters. So um, let's just start taking a look at them. All right, we have Scott here today and we're doing a roast off with the Collider Roasters and we have a Comorant roaster, it's a gas roaster, that's Scott's. And then we also have the Alio Bullet right behind it, which is Shane's. Shane will talk about the Alio here in a little bit. So we wanted to do a quick overview of each roaster. And we're just gonna start out just looking at the roaster itself. So I'm gonna have Scott talk about his Comorant, why he chose it, um, the pros and cons of it, and then we're just gonna go from there. All right, hi, I'm Scott. Um, this is the, the Cormorant uh, CR600. It's a 600 gram uh, propane drum roaster. Uh, I'm a hobbyist roaster and I originally started on a popcorn popper. Uh, and then I went to a hot top 200 gram. I wanted to do back to back roast and I wanted to do more profiling. And I thought this would be a roaster I could grow into. Um, originally got it and just used the, the gas gauge on it and, and uh, expanded off to artisan. So. So explain how this runs Artisan a little bit. Yeah, so what this roaster is, is it's a gas drum roaster. Uh, it requires 12 volts power to operate. Uh, there, it ships with a 120 volt to 12 volt adapter. The 12 volt will run the drum and it runs the fans. Um, and then there's a, a fidget, that's an additional 170 British pounds to, to add the thermocouples. So there's a thermocouple for the environmental temperature and a thermocouple for the beam temperature. And then that goes to USB. In my current setup, I just do, used a Pi 4 and installed Artisan on it. So that's my interface. So out of the box, this thing isn't really quite computer ready. I mean, the fidget you add, and that's gonna give you all your temperature feedback, which is awesome. Um, but you might have to have a little bit more knowledge. I mean, can you hook this up to this normal PC and plug it straight into the artisan software? Uh, explain how, I know you're this type of guy, so you enjoy stuff like this, but for someone that wants to buy this roaster, is it gonna be, like, where are the struggles gonna be? That's where I'm sure. looking. Well, I, I, you don't have to have artisan to operate it. It does have a local uh, bean temperature 
uh, probe right here. And my first few rows, just getting used to the machine, uh, getting used to adjusting the gas temperature, I, that's all I used. Uh, for Artisan, um, Artisan will, it interfaces with a multiple, multitude of scope. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll start over. Uh, it, it's, it works with a, a multitude of, of roasters. Um, Artisan will operate on a PC. It'll operate on a Raspberry Pi. And uh, it, in this particular example, we just have a, a USB interface to pick up the temperatures. Uh, other more commercial roasters, they may have PLCs or, or automation that, that Artisan would communicate directly through over Ethernet. But this is just using USB. So you can run this without the Artisan software, which is really cool. You can get a manual roast in. Uh, if you're just wanting temperature feedbacks, you have dials that's going to tell you your temperature just on the roaster itself. We'll show that in a little bit. Yep. But I just wanted to have people get an overview of this roaster. This is a gas roaster, so it's the only gas roaster today. About how many grams is it max out at? 600 grams. About 600 grams. Yep. And for me, uh, just where I'm at, I'm, I'm learning uh, profiling roast. I, I usually run about 425 on my roast. And once I'm happy with my profile, I'll, I'll do larger roast after that. But uh, I know that the company is working on a, 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 a version that's ele electric, so they have a, a electronics that uh, replace the existing ceramic burner under, underneath. So the gas is super cool. We did a quick look up before we started. It's uh, 1,795 pounds sterling. We did a little conversion. That's $2,182. Yep. You must pay another 160 pounds, which is approximately 194 US dollars for the artisan hookup. Correct. So that'll get you the fidgets and that'll get you ready to hook up to the artisan software. So yep. that's just kind of the quick overview of this. We, I want to go into a little bit more detail before we start roasting. And then we're going to go into the bullet okay. and then the Clydes. But that's just Scott's introduction and the Comron introduction. Yep. So now we're going to go over just kind of the, the basics of the roaster itself. So what makes this thing tick? Uh, we're going to start with, let's say, the, the bean shoot at the top. All right, we'll go through just the basic features of the Cormorant CR600. So uh, it is a drum roaster, and uh, the drum speed is controlled by an electronic dial here. Uh, it's variable speed. There's a, uh, the bean shoot is on the top here. This is removable for cleaning. You just pour your beans on the top, and then dispense in by lifting this lever here. Uh, we have a trier to look at the bean roast as you go. There's also a window on the front to view the beans as well. Uh, there's the factory temperature probe that goes to the local gauge here. That's the bean temperature probe. That's uh, whether you order it with Artisan or not. Uh, I'm sorry, with, with the interface for Artisan. When you add the, uh, the fidgets for the Artisan interface, it'll include the environmental temperature here and an additional bean probe. These are thermocouples, and they're landed onto a fidget thermocouple input and, and then over to a hub. The, uh, the ventilation on this, uh, there's a fan speed selector here, just an adjustable speed. Um, essentially drafts air in on the sides, uh, around the drum, and then down, across here, and out the back. Uh, what's handy about this is uh, there's a flower valve and you can just turn this and this will turn into your bean cooler at the end of your roast. So it just redirects the airflow instead of it going through the, the roaster drum, it'll go straight over the beans. It does not have a bean stirrer, that's probably one, one downside on it, but I just stir it with a wooden spoon when I cool it. Um, to dump the beans, it's a little bit different, you actually tip the entire roaster forward. Um, I always have a little bit of problem with this bowl here, but I just dump it, let it sit back down, and then I just move the bowl back. So it usually doesn't have any problem emptying all the beans out. Um, this is a light, and the light switch is here, and it's burned out about a year ago, and I haven't replaced it. So, oh, and it started working right just now. <laughs> Sweet. But that's the general overview. Again, it just needs 12 volts to operate. And then it is gas. How do you um, hook up the exhaust system on this? Yeah, so the, the, there is a vent chute that attaches here. So here's, there's just two muffin fans. This connects to this. There's a little thumb screw that holds this on right in place here. Let me okay, just that's duck this cool. up. 
Uh, the shaft collection is, I, I feel really excellent. Uh, it, does, it does a fantastic job, but this, at the end of each roast, you just empty this out. Uh, after a day's worth of roasting, I'll take a shop vac after it's cooled off and vacuum out any excess. But this does a really good job collecting it. That's about it on the mechanical side. Okay. Well, let's go over to Shane and let's talk about the bullet. Shane today, we're talking to him about his bullet roaster. So sure. thanks for coming, Shane. Good to be here. Yeah. All right, so yeah, my name's Shane. I work with a group called Legacy Ministries um, and I use the Ilio Bullet. Um, this machine is a workhorse. Uh, part of what I do for my job is I train high school students for, uh, to be ready for jobs after high school. So I have uh, literal children working on this machine and it's, it's holding up great. So we do all of our production roasting. Uh, we sell online, we sell all over the place. We have coffee carts. So we have a decent amount that we need to put out um, every week. So. About how many pounds do you think you crank out of this in a week? Uh, pounds, on a busy week, it can be 10, like. 10 pounds? Yeah, it's, it's we try to stay space mount, obviously. Um, but yeah, it can for, for like the size of roaster and for a home roaster, this thing maxes out. So it's a, it's a kilo max. Uh, I usually roast around 800 grams at a time. Okay. Um, it's got built in software or not built in, but free software online that you can easily connect to. Uh, so this one is just plug and play. It's ready to go out of the box. You plug it in, plug it into your computer with the software and it's good to go. Uh, it's got a it's got a USB port right back here. Uh, you while it's running, I'll turn it to roast really fast. So you have a preheat cycle, charge obviously. Oops. Oh, we did it, and it, from here you can adjust the power level and fan speed. Okay, it looks pretty easy so, to use. It's extremely easy to use. Very so good for. You've at, or you mentioned in the past that so it does have the Alio software, but you mm -hmm. can also run Artisan. So it's Definitely. an either or, and it's. Uh, which do you prefer and maybe what's the pros and cons of each? So I love the software that comes with it. Okay, um, very it's, cool. uh, they're updating it a lot. So it's, it's got, it's got different features throughout, but, uh, it automatically logs all your roasts. Obviously you can, um, get your profiles. You can put over pretty much like, like, uh, artisan would do where you can have your profile overlaid. Uh, it does have a replay profile feature. Uh, that I tried to use once, I was not a fond of that. So I do manu manual roasts still. Um, uh, it was mostly, f it was more focused on uh, bean temperature at time, and that's when it made the changes. So it wasn't taking into like rate of rise factors and things like that. So I don't, I don't trust the automation, but uh, the the program works great. It's got uh, settings to mark your yellowing point, your first crack, second crack, all of that, and you just, it's a click of a button and it's on there. So Okay. And the price point on this, we looked before, it was about $3,500 US. Yes. So definitely puts a little hole in your pocket as all of these are, but yeah. I would say from a price standpoint, they're all fairly comparable. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's really cool about the, the specific software and being able to uh, do profile so easily. I think as someone starting out, uh, what would you recommend? Would you recommend the built-in software or the artisan software? I'd recommend the built-in. Just the it's built easier um, with artisan. You'd have to like. Well, I think it has an ILO setting now on artisan, but uh, you, 
it's just logging things and every, keeping everything straight is very easy. It even has um, a website that it connects to called oh, Roast World. Cool. So, yeah, I've heard of that. So seen that. If you're, if you're a person that really likes to keep your stuff private, like your profiles, which I don't understand the point of that personally, but uh, that might bother you because it does auto upload everything you do onto your profile on your website that anybody can okay. access if they have your, your name on there. Um, but at the same time, that's a benefit because if I have a coffee that I think is going to be similar to a different coffee out there, I can look up, see what other people are doing. Okay. Well, let's just do a quick once over of sure. the machine itself. I'm going to move in. Okay. So give me a quick rundown of the bullet and maybe highlight a couple things that you like and maybe a couple things that you wish if they were to come out with an upgrade, like maybe what would you want upgraded in this machine? Make it better. For sure. Well, um, it, so you have your, your face plate. This uh, control panel is excellent. You can easily access all of your settings. Uh, you can change it between Fahrenheit and Celsius very easily. Uh, change your, your uh, charge temperature and keep that programmed in wherever you want it. Uh, this does have a voice that when this default setting, you turn it on, it talks to oh, you. Really? It's like got, it'll tell you when it's charged and things like that. Uh, I turned it off because I was letting the, I usually let the roaster warm up longer than just hit charge and then yeah. go because you want it to soak into the, the metal. But, uh, and it was just repeating the word charge over and over, <laughs> it was driving me nuts. So I turned that off. Um, one thing, uh, these little, these are like little book lights. I don't, I don't know fully what they are, but uh, this is my second one and it barely works now. Okay. So it's, these guys, they're flexible, but they, they break. They break so, real easy, okay. Yeah. I did have a slight issue with my trier at one point. Once again, I'm working with kids. So I had to rig a paper clip. I don't know if you can see that uh, into the trier so it wouldn't fall in basically. So we have the cooling tray, uh, which is just a, if you just look past here, it's a little computer speaker or computer fan in there. A uh, little filter to protect it, whoops, or jam into it. And I think this could be improved. Uh, it does only pull air from one spot in the back. Um, so you're not, if, especially if you've done more than one roast, if you forget to clean out this, this uh, bottom here, it'll not have much airflow. Okay. So what I have to do when I'm roasting, I, I sit here and I turn it, as well as stirring it with a wooden spoon. Okay. So I would like more power on the cooling fan. I'd like yeah. to be able to cool down faster. I've taken external fans, just put them over the top, oh, really? and it uh, helps a little bit, but... It's, that is, that is my biggest complaint, I think, is the cooling tray on this. Okay. Yeah, you want to get that roast stopped pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, the chaff collector on this. Yeah, so that's I know, this is something that, I don't know, I'll, I'll be curious your opinion on. Because sure. this is the one thing that I've noticed people say they don't like. Okay. I'm curious what you say. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> they say so. it's hard to clean out. And oh. I've never done it, so it's hard for me to really say... I don't Positive. think it's difficult that to clean That looks pretty out. easy to me. So you pop it off, you've got a filter. Let me know if I need to move. You're fine. Uh, keep that clean, no problem. And really you just dump out of this hole. This hole you can dump out. This also has this little feature here. It's that is, if you're trying to dump just out of this, okay. don't do that. It might be a pain. Uh, I recommend taking the filter out. You can even pop this off too and just yeah, dump just a second to pull that off so not it's a big deal at all not at all and also if this is getting dirty these are screws you just unscrew it the, this whole thing comes off oh very cool and then you can clean out the insides so it's i think it's extremely easy to clean the chat filter oh filter back in i have noticed um this little filter guy here if you don't set it in properly you can damage your fan oh really so okay you got to be careful but as long as you're doing everything right, then it should be good. Looks easy. Uh, it's a very easy machine to use. The hopper, mm -hmm. show us how that hopper yeah. works real quick. So it's nice because it has grooves cut into it. There's a bar that goes across inside here, which also this is the, the fan. Um, the fan sucks the air out through a tube that runs along the top okay. here. We can take the face plate off later as okay. well. And this will sit right in on top. Dump the beans in, give it a little wiggle, and you're good to go. It's just got a little simple plastic cover on top. 
So obviously you can't set your beans in the top before you and hit a button or something to drop them in, yeah. but uh, it's simple. It's Very not simple. that hard. Um, the trier, I mentioned before, the door opens and does hit the trier, okay. which is somewhat annoying, but there's a very easy fix for that. Okay, you just pull the trier out, out and yeah. you're good to go. Okay. Any, yep. Anything you just love or anything that you want to bring up just as we close this one out and we'll go on to the next before sure. we do a roast? Um, you don't have to have any negatives. Yeah. I do have another negative. I just okay. got it. So the drum, even on its lowest uh, speed, will throw beans out okay. and not into the the tray. So it'd be nice if I had a shield or something here. Gotcha. Which I um, used. Did I bring it? I did not bring it. I just have a piece of cardboard I stick there and okay. open it up. Uh, the handle can get a little warm too, but if you have a towel, it's fine. not a big deal. Yeah. Okay, well, so. that's a nice overview. This is the first time I've seen this one in person. I've seen lots of them online. Uh, I've been over to Scott's and I've seen his Comron probably twice. So uh, getting my eyeballs on both of these again and just getting familiar with them. But I guess let's take a quick look at, I'm probably going to just do an overview on the Kaleido M6. And then I want to hear what these guys think about it as well. Oh. Hey, I'm Barrett. I, I work for Espresso Outlet and the Kaleido Roaster, it's a model that we've started carrying. There's four different sizes. This is the M6 and this is the M2. The M2 does about 400 grams. The M6 does 700 grams. We have a 200 gram and a kilo version as well. I didn't bring those tonight, but I'm just here today. I have my friend Scott and Shane and we wanted to do a little roast off with the Comorant and the Bullet and the Kaleido and just really look at what do we like and what, what don't we like. Um, Scott, he's a hobbyist. I'm a hobbyist as well. Uh, Shane, he's doing it for a business and working with kids. So lots of different walks of life that we're bringing here. So some people, they might be looking to use one of these as their actual business, and it might be a bigger deal to get the options that they want out of it. And other people, they're just doing it on the weekends, making beans for their friends and their family. So Let's take a look at this roaster and then we're going to do some roasting with all of them. Okay, this is the M6 Pro. I actually have two with me. This is the Pro version. It runs Artisan only through either a USB cable or through Bluetooth. We also have the M2. This is the dual system and you have the option of using the Kaleido tablet, which kind of has its own built-in version of Artisan or you can use the Artisan software itself. There is a Kaleido only version of this and it only runs the tablet, so you have no Bluetooth functionalities. Pretty similar to the other two. Um, you have like your trier in the front, you have your bean chute at the top, you have your door at the bottom. So a couple of things that I like, at least about this, is it uses a lot of magnets. The, the door itself, like if you, you have to push pretty hard to get this to open. And it's not just gonna open on accident, so it's kind of a nice shoot. It does have this extension, which uh, on all of them, they don't all have this issue, but like on the M2, you can open up the sides and it doesn't interfere with this. On the M6, you need to remove this, but it just pops off, it's not a big deal. Uh, that does bring up what they call their cooling system, so you can pull these little tabs out and you can pull up the sides. It might help you cool down your roaster if you're wanting to put it away quickly, but not really the end of the world. You can let it cool down to ambient. The bean chute itself it uses magnets. It holds itself open with the magnets and it has two cooling fans in the back. So similar to the other two, there's no bean agitator, but it does, at least on this model, have very large fans. The M2, its fans are really good as well. The M1 that I didn't bring today, the original one just had one small fan, but the newer ones have two. So that's a little bit of the roaster itself. Um, it has the chaff collector in the side. It's just like a drawer. It's really easy to pull out. And the exhaust system on the back, I'd say that this is maybe one of the complaints that I have on this roaster is it doesn't have a built-in adapter for like the three inch ducting like on the Comron. We need to source an adapter that can go from the one and a half inch exhaust tubing to probably a three inch dryer tube. Uh, similarly with the, the 
being cooler, there's really no way of directing the smoke out. So if you have some smoky beans and you're trying to do this in your house, it, it's going to get really smoky in your house, I can promise. So I'd say that the ventilation on this, while it does work quite well, it needs more direction. All right, hey, we're gonna do a real basic roast on the, the Cormorant CR600. I uh, have about 500 grams of the same beans that Shane roasted. Um, I'll just turn this on, it'll come up the temp pretty quick. Uh, we just turn the gas, it'll ignite, and it just needs to warm up the thermal couple. And then I turn down the gas in a reasonable level. You can observe the, the flame from the little cut out there. So what I'll do, um, I'll wait till it comes up to temp. I usually get it to about 360. I had this pre-warm before we started the video, so it'll come up pretty quick. I'm gonna put the beans in here. They won't dispense automatically. And um, I will drop them and just click the, the charge button in Artisan. I'm running the drum at full speed and I'm running fans about uh, eight volts. And that's, and I usually don't tweak that throughout the roast. <clears throat> we have the vent going out, out through the garage right now. Okay, so when I, when I dump the beans, I'm gonna crank up the heat and I'll be manually adjusting heat throughout the whole process. So we'll go ahead and charge it. So I'm gonna click charge. I'm gonna turn up the heat. One thing is the beans do get trapped in the chute a little bit. Sometimes they need a little encouragement to get in. All right, we'll just close that. Make sure that the trier's in to prevent any, any uh, ambient air from getting in. Now, uh, on Artisan here, I'm looking at the environmental temperature and the bean temperature and I'll just be cranking down the heat at, throughout the roast as we go, just to kind of keep a even profile. I doubt, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna pay a lot of attention to that, just to demonstrate the operation of the roaster, so I'm sure we won't get the perfect roast. So at this point, I'm pretty much running about 90% gas. Um, it's about 43 millibar right now okay. on, the, on the propane. <clears throat> the, <clears throat> The roaster uses a ceramic uh, element there for the for the for the propane, and uh, this this is the knob here to adjust. It's the regulator. It's a little bit touchy. It's uh, you, this doesn't take much to turn it to dial it. Uh, I know others other owners have retrofitted uh, and installed a a swage lock, multi-turn regulator, and a stepper motor, and then controlling that through Artisan. Um, I'm doing all manual control. Uh, typically, I would go ahead and record the burner levels in Artisan. I'm not doing that during this video, just one less thing for me to click on. So really, I'm using Artisan in this example just to be recording the, the ET and BTs. So I'll run this up. I'll adjust at about uh, 300 is what I'm shooting <coughs> for on the beam temperature. And I'll start cranking it down. I got a little cheat sheet here. I'll just, that a profile that usually works. Okay. It'll get us in the, for demonstration purposes, it'll get us close. You can see the little flame there. Yeah, I saw a little, flame there. the burner yeah. through the burger. That's cool. Um, so while we're waiting, just a couple things. Uh, as you notice, you know, the bean drop, uh, as I'm charging, the, the beans sometimes get caught in here. It's not real difficult to just push along with the spoon. Um, I'd like to see that with a, a higher angle to, to allow that to just discharge easier. Uh, this environmental temperature probe is not in the ideal position, but it's the most, it, it's the best position that is probably less maintenance. Ideally, this should go down into the chute down below for the air duct, but it would collect shaft. Because um, it does get some beam strike here, so that influences the temperature. Um, I prefer to have it just in the air duct and have air across it only. So in the future, I intend on moving that. Uh, the bean temperature probe is in a really good state. It's 
um, just due to the direction of the drum there. It has, it's in the bean pile really well. So that, that's, that's been a pretty stable temperature, which is the most important. And that was something that we didn't really know about the bullet. And it uses an infrared sensor for its bean sensors, correct? Or is that the environmental temperature? He has two sensors for um, on the bullet. It's the infrared and then also the the typical RTD, I believe. Okay. So these are the ones like set up as the uh, environmental temperatures. They're just two bean temperatures probes, basically. So the probe, uh, the the general thermal couple, is. Uh, sitting just below where the infrared probe is. Okay. Okay. I know that was something that I meant to bring up and I totally forgot to ask about and Scott just reminded me. So yes. I know that is a difference that some people seem to like or it's just I don't know if they necessarily like it. It's just a really nice feature to have that infrared sensor. That is something different that I'm also just noticing right now is these other two roasters are pretty much front facing. This one is kind of a side facing and I mean, it works, it's cool. I just never really thought about it until now. Yeah, and as, later in the roast you'll see, uh, to, to empty the beans, you'll, you'll want it sideways to help. Oh yeah. Help move it Definitely that. makes sense with this design, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I almost wish, sometimes I do a slight angle just so I can see the front of it little easier. Okay, we're nearing the end of our roast. We're at 17% development. Take a look here. Okay, what I'll do, just the process, I'm gonna turn the gas off. I'm gonna turn the fan up and open up the flower valve. So it's a multi-step process. Just wanted to explain it before I did it. So gas Water off, on. fan on, and I'll open up the valve. And I'll just dump. And then I just position this bowl over the over the flower valve there and stir. So the gas is off. What I'll do to artisan, I'll uh, tell it I dropped it. And then um, I can look at that later. But that's that's about it. When this is done cooling off, what I'll do is we'll pull out that sh that shaft container, see how much shaft it picked up. But this looks relatively clean here, as far as the shaft collection is concerned. I don't see a lot in the beans. Now your light works. Yeah, it's a bonus. That's a bright light too. And again, the, the voltage requirements, are, it's just 12 volts to, to run the roaster. Um, it's supplied with an external power adapter to, so it goes AC to 12 volts. Um, that just runs the fans and the drum. Okay. All right, so we've let it cool a little bit here. I'm gonna turn off the fan and then I'm gonna pull the shaft collection out so we can see what it, what it collected. I use a little oven mitt here to, cause it gets a little warm. But uh, we can see here it does. Yeah, it's nice and full. Yeah. So we just empty that out and go on to the next roast. You can do back-to-back -back roast pretty easily. There's no real set cool down period. So that's it. Very nice. It's nice and even. You got your fidgets with the Artisan software. That's super cool and maybe I'll do some automation, some crazy yeah. stuff here in the future. But yeah, I'd like I to. think it's super capable as is. I mean, I prefer the more manual roast myself anyway, so. Let me have mentioned earlier, I mean, I, when I first started out learning the machine, I just ran with this bean temperature mm. of local dial here and I didn't use ours. And just, just to get used to adjusting the, the, the propane and the fans and just get used to the machine before I, tried to even run it on, on the computer so all right hope that helps very cool thanks. yeah thanks for sharing sure
Okay, so I've got, uh, it's called Roast Time, which is their program, uh, and it has your normal graph. You can, you can even customize all the colors on everything, which is pretty cool. Um, but you have your power level, your drum speed, and your fan level, uh, and you can adjust those on the computer, and it'll switch between, or you can use the adjustment buttons on those. There. Oh, there we go, right here. So, um, one cool thing about this roaster is it's got a dead man switch on it, so or dead man alarm, or I can't remember what they call it, but uh, it's, if you don't touch a button on the face of the roaster uh, for a certain period of time when it's at a certain um, temperature, it'll give you an alarm the first, for, for, for the first few times, but then um, it'll automatically shut everything down. So you, you can't burn this out. I mean, not easily. Not easily. So, <laughs> That's um, pretty handy, so it doesn't just keep roasting and yeah. cause a fire. So it does uh, hit, tell me to charge the beans a little earlier than I'd prefer. I usually, a uh, good test is just touch the faceplate if you can't hold your finger on it. You're probably at temp. I bumped up the heat a little bit just because uh, I'm roasting in a wider open place than I normally do. Uh, so the environmental temperature does kind of affect what you're doing. But once you get used to the roaster, you can compensate for that, no problem. So, uh, it's dipping a little more than I want, but we need to get going. So, um, first things first, so you pulled back on the camera, cool. So you just pop this off, try to do it quickly so you're not losing any heat. And I just dump the beans in. I like the big glass window in the front, that's really nice. Oh, yeah. And I'll pop you that really back on. It. And we're roasting. So you can uh, program in before what you want your standard uh, preheat temperature to be. Also what you want your uh, first uh, power level and fan level to be. So I usually blast it all the way with nine at the beginning and then drop down, especially with this coffee. So are you using a predefined roast and it's auto roasting or are you going through manual roasting? So I'm going through manual <laughs> roasting with an overlay. Okay, that's what I like too. Yeah, I, I just don't trust the robots, so that's what I do. So obviously, I mean, I'm working at, out of an old house is where, where I work, so it's, it's drafty and it's not the best uh, ventilation or anything, unfortunately, uh, which I do have a ventilation set up there. You don't want to run this in your house because the, the exhaust just shoots out in this hole here. Uh, we'll be seeing that once I turn the fan up, once the smoke starts producing, and hopefully don't have any negative effects from that. <laughs> um, but normally I will have a, a exhaust. You want to leave it about an inch inch of room over the top. Uh, I even have a fan that's in, in line that pulls some of it out, so. And on your bean catcher, do you have any sort of a connection for that? For this? Yeah, for your exhaust on that? Yeah. Or does it just blow out the back too? It just blows out the back, yeah. But you shouldn't have too much, too much. shaft. Like that should just be the beans, so. There's no duct for it, though? No duct. Okay. I've seen people uh, make ducts for it, but it's, I don't think you're putting too much out. Like, if you're getting your fan temperature up high enough, um, then uh, you shouldn't have smoke issues or anything like that, so. So yeah, it's not following the profile at all. Uh, I'm going to chalk that up to environmental temperature issues, but to give you an idea of how it works. It even has like the adjustments you've made at the bottom at, for the profile roast, so you can see when you made each adjustment. It's got these nice buttons at the bottom, yellowing first crack and the first crack, uh, which earlier on in their uh, software, they only had one button that changed when you push it. <laughs> It was awful, because if you accidentally miss one or something, like, it's bad. This one, you can hit it. You can even go in during the row to edit your time for it if you miss it. You want to go back. So, yeah, you can, you can even pop up here, name it. So.
and you can keep track of your beans on the website. Uh, so you have like, uh, yeah, all your storage software, and then you can insert anything. It's starting to change color a little bit. Just a little bit yellow. So my yellowing point was about 10 seconds ago, so it's going a little longer than I'd prefer, but. So I might as well show, show the trier where it's nice. You get a nice little sample, pops back in quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark it yellow and bump my fan. So right now I'm making the, uh, the changes on the computer. Too. Not having this much used to having this much light hitting the yeah. beans, so it's like a lot easier. Because yeah, this is like little not, teeny light. This one's not even on right now. I wonder if they have, they yeah. sell anything that is better. Yeah. Is this USB, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So I'm sure I can get something different, but. That's the inter interesting thing on these is the smallest one has a little teeny tiny light and the larger ones don't have light at all. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all right. And yeah, once you reach first crack, it automatically, uh, just like Artisan would, where it, it tells you development percentage, development time, uh, or temperature difference as well. And time since first crack, time since second crack. So you get to tell it when first crack starts, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that was the thing that was kind of confusing to me. Even if you're trying to run one of the automatic profiles to get running, you still have to click through the button. So you click the charge button, yeah. you click the the drying in button, the first yeah. crack button, first crack in, if you go second crack. So you still have to click through the buttons, even though it's still semi-automated. But if yeah. you don't click through the buttons, this is gonna go way up high, oh, it's and it's gonna going stay in. high. So like, if you don't click that charge button, it's gonna yeah. stay 100%. Okay. Or when you click the charge button, it drops down to 10 or 20%. Yeah. On this one, you <laughs> don't have to use any of these buttons. Those are just uh, letting you know. Just there. So it'll, it'll just do whatever you're telling it on, on the screen or on the power. Like, okay. So. I'm gonna bump the fan up a little. It's so starting to smell it. So using the software, you can control the power and the fan speed. Right? Power and fan speed. Can also use it on here. I've been hitting the button, so we probably won't hear the, the alarm, but it just beeps at you uh, if you're not if you're not close to it. So. so look at that chaff buildup in there. This coffee yeah, is a lot of chaff. Extremely chaffy, but <laughs> up oh, there's the dead man's alarm. So just hit a button. I usually hit the function buttons because they uh, I don't believe they do anything um at one point the firmware had it so i think that would mark like first crack but i think they took that off because it was people were marking it early i haven't tested it so but you know we're getting close to first crack yeah, i can just you barely can hear, hear it a second ago yeah there it's going let's mark that i like to drop my power down a little at this point So even with the, the preheat going off differently, we hit first crack pretty close to where it was. So could have been that my roaster was dirty when I saved this profile. I didn't pick my normal one. I just picked the, one of the early ones, but okay. on the top, but yeah, it's coming through. Uh, this coffee cracks very hard, so it's easy here on this roaster. Um, I've had some that are a little more difficult to hear, uh, but it's a small roaster. It's pretty open inside, so it's, you can hear it generally. That was the odd thing on my Gene Cafe. It's so small, and it was very hard to hear the crack. Yeah. Extremely hard. Interesting. <clears throat> and the Kaleidos, I can hear it pretty well. I can hear this on the bullet well. Mm -hmm. I think Scott's you'll be able to hear well. I imagine so. Yeah. Uh, have you ever messed with a Loring? No. Uh, those are so sealed in. I know a guy that gets a uh, stethoscope. A oh, really? And it sticks it in. He has like a probe and sticks it into the. Because uh, they have like a latch on the trier that opens and closes. So when okay. you pull the trier out, it closes up. 
Oh, really? And so he just like pokes it in there. Yeah. It's, those are cool machines. So usually at this point, I'm just watching my development percentage, uh, as long as everything else is hitting close. Drop the power down a little. So you're watching your development percentage? Yeah, after first crack, I generally go up development percentage uh, just for consistency, obviously, if everything else is hitting where it's supposed to, which this roast is fine. It's not, not my best work. Uh, so usually I'll dump that out, but we didn't get anything ready. So, okay, so I'm at 20%, so I'm going to hit the PRS button and open the stay up. Sorry, I'm going to There we go. I knew it was going to throw a couple. Looks nice though. Sure. So, sounds like everything's out and then I just get the old wooden spoon. Stir it around. And then, like I said, I like to shift the bowl so it's not just cooling one side because this bowl does get pretty warm, especially if you're doing multiple roasts. And the cool thing about this roaster is if I want to do another one after, I hit that, it starts preheating right, 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 right away. So, got it's a little smoky nice. in here, not too bad. Not too bad, less than I expected. Yeah. <clears throat> Which I don't actually want it to be there, so. But that will leave the cooling fan on while it preheats. Okay. Um, so that is that's about it. Very cool. So definitely for a beginner, I think this is a a great way to learn. They simplified a lot of stuff. You don't really have to know too much of the technical stuff. Obviously, you've got the graph going. Yeah. You need to learn how to read a graph, how to reproduce roast curves, but. Uh, that'll come with time. This one makes it pretty pretty simple for them. So it takes longer to cool than I'd prefer, but it's not, I mean, the coffee's done roasting. It's not yeah. roasting it still. It's cool enough that it, it's small enough batch and it's cool enough that just environmental temperatures and that little fan are gonna get it down to where it's not a problem, but could be better. Okay. And then when this is done, it'll go into uh, just like back into the off mode when it gets cooled down uh, and you can turn it on the shutdown. It'll cool itself down. And when it's, uh, when it's done cooling, it'll tell you off and you can unplug it. So. Cool. Yeah. So it has an automatic cool down mode built into it. Yes. Which is pretty much just cut the power, turn the fan up. But yeah, it's, pretty much. It keep the, keeps the drum turning so you don't scorch it. And, yeah. All right, we're going to try to do a quick roast on this Kaleido M6. We have it preheated. I have the charge temperature set at about 170. We have about 510 grams of green in here. I'm going to go ahead and click the start button. And we'll get ready to hit the charge button. And let's drop our beans in. So we can keep the door shut. And let's click the charge button. I have this background loaded from the other day when I roasted this Ethiopian. I kind of wish it ran a little bit longer, but I still really think it did a good job. I'm gonna pull the heat pretty far back because I know it's gonna start spiking here pretty quick. I usually run the damper at least at 20, the drum at 100 throughout the whole roast. As soon as we start to hit first crack, I like to up the exhaust fan. All right, bump the heat up just a little bit because I know it's gonna start falling and we might have to give it a little bit more. I usually keep that Delta BT at about 13 if I can. 
Okay, we're at about eight minutes and you can maybe hear it. The first crack is starting. You can go ahead and hit first crack start. On the profile that I have, it says about 192 degrees at eight minutes, 21 seconds, but that was a completely different bean. This one I think is starting just a little bit sooner. So we're at about 189 degrees on the bean temp and they're definitely, the, you can see the chaff starting to slough off the bean and we're getting some progress. So we're gonna try to get to 18% development. Uh, I probably need to drop the temperature a little bit and up the damper just a hair. And if it starts dropping too much, I might need to keep the temp up, we'll see. So I'll probably dump at about 203 to 205 degrees. We're at about 15.6% development. Let's go ahead and drop because I think it's running on the PID. So the exhaust fan cools these down pretty quick. They're still pretty hot, but they'll keep cooling. Didn't bring a spoon, but that's fine. So there's our 500 grams of beans out of the Clydo M6. A little underdeveloped. I think it was running on the PID for the drop. So we didn't get quite to that 18%, but not too bad, I guess. Well, definitely one of our longer videos, and I really wanted to have this wrap up with Scott and Shane, but we ran out of time. It was really late that evening. So I just wanted to do a quick final wrap up. Um, I'd say all three roasters performed quite well. I think all of us, we were kind of a little bit busy talking and maybe not paying attention to our roasts, but you know, so don't let that scare you on any of these. Uh, it's really just the user experience that we're looking at today on these roasters. And I mean, if you're looking at it as a hobby, which one is going to be a good size for you? And if you're looking at it more towards the business side, which one of these might be good for you? So um, kind of look at the workflow of all of these. I'd say for the most part, the workflow is all very similar amongst all of them. So the big differences that I see that I'll just highlight that I think we all could agree on. The, the Comeron is a gas roaster, so it's diff different than the other two, which are electric. And that could be a major plus, or it could be kind of a con. Now you have to have a propane bottle or a gas source. Uh, not a real big deal. I mean, you can go get a propane bottle anywhere you have them for your gas grill. But that is just something that is just quite a bit different from the other roasters. But what's really cool about that is you're getting a little miniature gas roaster. Um, it's, I would say, a little bit less technologically advanced than the other two. So you can get the fidgets for the Comorant, and that will feed back into Artisan, which is great because you can do profile roasting now. But straight out of the box, you will have to upgrade this. So it's not just a standard thing. And if you're trying to do any sort of an auto roast, there is really no auto roast feature, at least at this point. So the other two, they do have an auto roast feature, so you can roast it on a PID and it'll follow a profile. So it's basically a manual roaster with intelligent feedback. So that is really neat and don't let that think that that's a con, but just putting that out there that it is a little bit different roaster than the other two. The Alia Bullet, 
Um, like I said at the beginning of this video, it seemed to be kind of just the gold standard. Uh, it's a kilo roaster, so it's a nice size. I'd say anything smaller is going to be at least half the size. Anything bigger is going to be probably three kilos and quite large and quite expensive. So it's a very nice size. It is portable. It might be a little bit too big for a lot of homeowners. A lot of homeowners, they might not want that, that full kilogram. And something to keep in mind with all of these roasters is if you're wanting to run like 100 gram batches, it's going to be, you're not going to be very happy running very small test batches in a kilogram size roaster. You're going to want something smaller, uh, which leads to the Kaleidos. The Kaleidos actually come in four different sizes. So the smallest version is right behind me. It's the M1. It's a 200 gram little sample roaster and it has all the functionalities of the large one. Uh, the next size up is the M2, and that's probably one of my favorites, especially for like a homeowner. So if you're just doing some home roasting, the M2 is 400 grams, so double the size of the M1. And then the M6 is 700 grams, and then the M10 is a full kilo. So the M10 would be very comparable to the Alia Bullet in terms of capacity. The M6 is very comparable to um, the Comrade in size. As for which one's the best, that's really up to you and what you're going to be using it for. If you're gonna be using it for a home or if you're going to be using it for maybe a small business. So I hope this video helps you make an informed decision. If you have any questions, I mean, we can answer the questions about the Kaleido Roasters. The other two brands, I mean, we just use for fun and you can reach out to those companies if you have any specific questions about those roasters. But thanks for watching. I know that this one was a little bit long. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I've, I've seen the Comrat once or twice in person, but I had not used it. I think he just heated it up for me. Uh, the, the Alio, as popular as it is, is the first time I'd really seen one in person. So I really enjoyed seeing all these side by side and just seeing how they perform. So hit subscribe, that always helps out our channel. Uh, yet again, if you wanna see anything else or you have any other questions, just reach out. Thanks.